Okay, today we're going to cover problem 2-2b on page 87. So what we're going to do is journalize the transactions for this uh, Victoria Hall who is a licensed dentist. So if you look on the bottom of page 87, we have four transactions for the beginning of April when we turn on page 88. We have five more transactions that need to be journalized. So in the instructions it says to journalize the transactions in part A, part B is the post to the ledger accounts, and part C is a prepared trial balance. So on the first sheet we have the journal entries which we'll list here. And on the second sheet we will post to the entries to each uh, separate account and over here we will create a trial balance. So the first entry is for April 1st, which says that um, there was an investment of $20,000 cash into the business. So we we're, we're going to debit cash for $20,000 and credit owner's equity also for $20,000. Then we're going to post these transactions. So on April 1st, we have a debit to cash of 20,000. So our balance is 20,000. And owner's capital has a credit of 20,000 on April 1st. Then also on April 1st, it says hire the secretary receptionist at a salary of $700 per week, payable monthly. Now, since this was a hiring, there was no cash to change hands. There was no expense that was incurred on the date of hire. There is no transaction for the second entry on April 1st. So April 2nd, it says they paid office rent for the month for $1,100. So now we have a transaction for rent expense. So we're increasing the expense account by $1,100. And there's also a decrease to cash of $1,100. So we go to the posting. So on April 2nd, we have a credit. Okay. And on the rent for April 2nd, we have a debit and so our balance is $1,100 for the rent expense. So the next date is April 3rd. So they purchased dental supplies on account. Okay, so the supplies account increases. And says it said and since since the um, bill was not paid, it was on account. The credit accounts payable for four thousand. So on our posting, the supplies account increases. There's a debit of four thousand, and accounts payable credited for 4000 Okay. Then the next journal entry is April 10th. It says provided dental services and billed insurance companies $5,100. So provided services means that revenue was generated and bill meaning the customer has not paid their bill incurring an accounts receivable for the company for $5,100. Oops. And service revenue is increased $5,100. So if we go to our postings, 
accounts receivable as a debit balance now $5,100. And service revenues credited $5,100. Okay, then also, then the next transaction on April 11th uh, says receive $1,000 cash advance from Trudy Bork for an implant. So, in advance means that a service is going to perform be performed sometime after April 11th. So meaning that revenue is going to be generated sometime in the future, but this cash payment was made today as of April 11th. So since, since this transaction is not essentially complete, it means that a liability called unearned revenue has to be created because this implant um, this service won't be completed until uh, sometime in the future. Okay? So unearned revenue we need to credit. So on the posting, we debit cash $1,000. And unearned revenue gets credited for $1,000. Then the next day is April 20th. So it's received $2,100 cash for services completed and delivered to John Carl. Okay, so revenue is being generated again and the customer paid when the service was rendered for $2,100. And then service revenue, I'll just copy this here, is credited for $2,100. So our cash is going to increase by $2,100. And the service revenue will also increase and be credited by $2,100. Okay, so the next day is April 30th. So the next transaction says that the secretary got paid. Okay, so now, now previously the secretary had been hired, but here they actually get paid, or she actually gets paid. Okay, so it's $2,800. So that's an expense. So that's a wage expense or salaries for $2,800. And it says the receptionist was paid, so we want to credit cash. If it said on account, or they hadn't been paid, then we credit accounts payable. But here we credit cash. So in this particular case, April 30th, we have a credit or a decrease in cash of $2,800. And wages expense is a debit for $2,800. Okay, and then the last transaction for April 30th is that it says pay $2,400 to Smile Company for accounts payable due. So the previous accounts payable was up here for supplies for four thousand, and what's going to happen is twenty eight hundred, excuse me, twenty four hundred of the four thousand is going to be paid off. So we want to debit accounts payable for twenty four hundred dollars, and we want to credit cash for twenty four hundred dollars. Okay, so in this particular case, the last transaction for cash is a credit or decrease for $2,400.
and accounts payable is being paid off for $2,400. So we're subtracting from the credit balance and our new balance of accounts payable is $1,600. Okay, so now all we need to do is create our trial balance over here and we just take the balances. So, a debit balance of cash is $16,800. Accounts receivable is $5,100. Supplies is $4,000. Accounts payable is a credit balance. 1600 unearned revenue is a credit balance of a thousand owners capital capital is a credit balance of 20,000 service revenue has a credit balance of 7200 wages expense whoops, is a debit balance of 2800 and rent expense has a debit balance of 1100 so now if we total these accounts we have $29,000 $29,800 for my debit balance and my credit balance should be the same so if we sum all the credit entries we have 29,800 so my debits equal my credits so that's the end of problem 2-2b